In this example video, we're going to put together an aging of our accounts receivable, and from that aging, determine how much of our estimate we need to put on our books as an adjusting entry at the end of our fiscal year. So it tells us that our company has a fiscal year end of December 31st, 20Y6, and someone has already started putting together our aging schedule. So they've put together a partial aging, and we have some subtotals already created. It then tells us that through the review, it was found that some of the accounts receivable were actually missing. So they're missing from that aging schedule that they've provided to us above. So we need to add those missing customers to our aging schedule, determine the totals per aging category, apply out those uncollectible percentages, and determine the amount of our adjusting entry. So first thing first, we have to determine how many days pass due each one of these missing customers from our aging schedule are. So when we're looking to calculate the number of days past due, we look at the due date that the customer was supposed to pay us by, and we compare that to the fiscal year end date. So again, the fiscal year end is December 31st, 20Y6 for this company. So May 22nd, Adam Sports was supposed to pay us by. That gives us nine more days left in May, 30 days in June, 31 days in July, 31 days in August, 30 days in September, 31 days in October, 30 days in November, and 31 days in December that they are now past due, or in total, 223 days past their due date. For Blue Dunn Flies, they were supposed to pay us by October 10th, so there are 21 days remaining in October past that due date. They've missed all of November, so 30 days in November, and they've missed all of December, or 31 days, or 82 days past their due date. For the next one, there's one more day left in September, and then we have all of October, all of November, and all of December that they've been past due, or 93 days past their due date. For the next one, October 20th, there are 11 more days in October, 30 days in November, 31 days in December, or 72 days past the due date. For Green River, they were supposed to pay us by November 7th, so there are 30 days in November, so that means there are 23 days past their due date at the end of November, and then all of December, which has 31 days, so they're 54 days past their due date. For Smith River, we had supposed to pay us by the 28th, so two more days in November, and all of December, they are 33 days past their due date. Western Trout was supposed to pay us by December 4th. It's now December 31st, so that is 24 days past their due date. And this is very important to pay attention to. It tells us Wolf Sports is supposed to have paid us by January 20th, 20Y7. So this is looking at the aging as of December 31st, 20Y6. So actually, Wolf Sports is not past their due date at all because that hasn't even come due yet as of the end of the period. So we now need to add these missing accounts to our aging of receivables. So again, it had already been started for us, some accounts had already been added, and now we have to include what was missing. Remember, at the top here, we have from not past due to over 120 days past due as our aging buckets. The balance is gonna show how much in total of accounts receivable is outstanding at the end of that fiscal period. So we have to put the amount in both the balance column and the appropriate aging bucket column that we have. So Adam Sports was supposed to pay us $4,800, and we calculated that there are 223 days past their due date. So they go into that over 120 um, day category. Blue Dunn was to pay us $5,200, and they are 82 days past their due date. So in the 82 days past their due date, they fall into the 61 to 90 day aging category. So we add them to that appropriate aging category. Next, they owed us $8,000, and they were supposed to pay us 
and they're 93 days past their due dates, they fall into the 91 to 120 days past due. Next, we had an amount owed of $6,600 and they are 72 days past their due date. So they fall into the 61 to 90 day category. So we add that $6,600 here. Next, $3,500 was due and Green River is 30, uh, 54 days past their due date. So they fall into the 31 to 60 day category. Next, Smith River owed us $2,000 and they are 33 days past their due date, so they fall into that 31 to 60 day category. Western Trout owes us $6,600 and they are 24 days past their due date, so they're gonna fall into that one to 30 day aging category. And finally, Wolf Sports owed us $4,000. They don't owe us anything until the start of the next year. So they are in that not past due category that we have. So we're gonna total up each column to determine how much we have in total outstanding accounts receivable and how that is broken out. So always start with your subtotals. Don't go above your subtotals and don't start below your subtotals. Start right at that subtotal line. We're adding those missing accounts to what we've already prepared of an aging schedule so far. So in total, we have $1,342,300 in total accounts receivable. Of that amount, 747,000 is not past due. 300,700 is between one and 30 days past due. $125,500 is somewhere between 31 and 60 days past due. $52,000 is between 61 and 90 days past due. 31,300 is 91 to 120 days past due. And 85,800 is over 120 days past due. So we now need to look at our percentage of uncollectibles. So back in our instructions, it tells us, based on the past history, how much we do not expect to collect from each one of our aging categories. And we need to add that into our aging schedule. So we don't add it to our total because again, it's broken out by the aging buckets. So we estimate that 1% will not be collected out of anything that's not past due by the end of the year. 3% from one to 30 day past due. 12% from 31 to 60. Jumps to 30% when it's 61 to 90 days past due. 40% when it's 91 to 120. And it's 78% when it's over 120 days past due. So we're gonna do that math to figure out how much we do not expect to collect from each one of our aging categories. So we're looking at the total times the percentage. So out of the 747,000 that we estimate we will not, um, that we have in not past due receivables, we estimate that 1% will not be collected or $7,470. Out of the 300,700, we are estimating we will not collect 9,000. 21. Next, we don't think we'll collect 15,060. Out of the $52,000, we don't think we're going to collect 30% or 15,600. Out of the $31,300, we don't think we'll get 40% or 12,520. dollars and out of the $85,800 that are over 120 days past the due date, we don't think we're gonna collect 78% or in total $66,924. So when we add up all of our estimates that we think are uncollectible per aging category, we add them up to get our total. So in total, out of the $1,342,300 that we are waiting to receive from our customers, we are estimating that we will not collect 126,595 of that. 
So using that information, we can now put together our adjusting journal entry. Remember, we've looked at everything. We've looked at every single outstanding accounts receivable. So when we go to do our journal entry, we have to factor in or out any existing balance in the allowance account. Remember, your allowance account is a permanent account. So we date this as of December 31st. Our entry is always bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts. So they tell us that before any adjustment that our allowance account has a debit balance of $3,500. We know that the allowance account is a contra asset account, so it should normally have a credit balance. So we need to get it back to that credit balance side. The reason why it has a debit balance is because we wrote off more in accounts receivable last year than we had previously estimated. So that's why it's showing as a debit balance. We know debits and credits opposite subtract. Remember, when you are doing an aging schedule, when you come up with that total, that in this case $126,595, that is the amount that must be the ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts after we've posted our adjusting entry. So we need to bring our allowance account from being a debit of $3,500 to a credit in total of that $126,595. So when there's a debit balance existing, we add it to the amount of our estimate. So we're gonna take the $126,595 and add the $3,500 to get to the $130,000 95 as the amount of our adjusting entry. Debit balance, credit transaction, opposites will subtract in our general ledger for the allowance for doubtful accounts. And when it's subtracted, it will leave the ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts as of 126,595.